All right. So like I said, I, I was sitting here last night and I found that it just, you know, came to me. Like I've told you guys before, going down the road or anything uh, in the shower, sometimes the Holy Spirit put a term there and I'll go find it. And that, what, that's what happened last night. It was pretty exciting. So Ramsell method is indeed encoded one time. Um, it's pretty, pretty astounding. You know, sitting right on top of it is, is a, I mean, right on it. Like it says Ramsell method. And then right on top of that, it says tools. When I, when I found that I was kind of like set back and was floored a little bit, I was like, man, that surely fits. It is a tool. Yeah, it is. It's a it's cool. Swiss Army knife of the uh, Bible codes. <laughs> yeah. So is anybody working on codes that, that are here right now? Let me put this on YouTube for that purpose. I was just talking about Ramsell method last night. And uh, like just all of a sudden, now I didn't think about it before. I think I looked up maybe Ramsell theory. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. Anybody else look along that lines? I may not be the first one to find that. Well, what, what is Ramsell method? Ramsell method is, he had, a, he had this theory um, back, and he didn't even use computers, by the way. He did it by hand. He believed that um, the encoded text and the, and the plain text are, they go hand in hand. One, one is the answer to the other. Um, you know, not, for instance, you know, Isaiah 53 is talking about the Messiah. Um, now, some interpretations of that, even among Jewish uh, believers, is this is the whole nation of Israel, which you could probably twist that to fit. However, it doesn't. I mean, it's too, too, too much to imply that this is a person, right? One person. Um, we just have the benefit of being believers in Yeshua to know what his suffering was and you can compare the two and it's, there's no doubt it, we're talking about Yeshua and in that text, in just one chapter, it says Yeshua is my great name. Um, so that is a, a famous code that Ramsell found. Um, there are others uh, where the anointing of the high priest is and I have to go and look and see what, um, scripture that is, but um, where where the high priest is being anointed with the oil, it said it in says encoded there, behold Yeshua. There, so you know, and then we have found more and more and more evidence to indicate that this is you know, this is not just a theory. This is this is proven out to be um, something that's very consistent. It's one of the it's one thing that it is very consistent, like predicting codes is inconsistent, right? It's, it's, it's all over the wall sometimes. Uh, very difficult. You, the margin of error is huge when you're trying to make some sort of prediction. But when you're looking at the text and, and as far as interpretation, if we're in hermeneutics, you know, what is the interpretation? What is the text saying here, right? Then you have these thousands of interpretations for all these learned men. So many of them miss the mark. Some come very close, but there must be a way to reconcile that. There shouldn't be so much confusion. This guy, that guy, what they preach and what they teach. Sometimes fiercely in a opposition to one another, right? Well, is it possible that Yahuwah enabled a way to interpret his own book? I think it's very possible and it's proven to be the case. And that's what Ramsell method is. Um, and so, it, you know, as I was saying, I was sitting here eating or right about to eat and just kind of came to me and I went and looked and lo and behold, there it was. And so here we are. Uh, I haven't got to work it too much. It's only, you'll see, you'll see, it's only a few terms, but I'll share this with you guys. All right. So this is the initial one. It has a huge margin down at the bottom because it's a five, seven, six, two, six. As you can see there, Ramsell method and the word tools is sitting right on top of it. And then in the plain text on either side is codes. Then um, uh, I did see Yaakov, which is his first name in the plain text. And then I searched for it 
and uh, you know because of the proximity and the letter number of of uh, letters in between this skip here, which is 22. Now I took that to mean the 22 letters, and that's why I, I kept this one instead of just keeping the smallest, right? So this would be proximity, and it had an interesting number, 22. Uh, I found the word day in uh, right next to it. I don't know if it's just randomness or if there's you know a prefix and suffix behind that. Like I said, this is as far as I got. Now I did. And I, I frequently do this when there's a huge margin is I'll go ahead and put a row skip instead of just working this as the only table. Right. And so that's, that's what I did. Um, so I put that on a row skip and this is what it looks like here. Now this is what's really interesting. Something that a word that has been coming up in, in several interesting tables like Zophan Yahuwah, which is um, the hidden of Yahuwah. And then, um, codes of Yahuwah, this same word comes up in both vertical in the same column as the access term, which is OTO. Now, OTO is a versatile Hebrew word. It actually has a few meanings. It can mean ethics. It also can mean letters. You, you hear Alan Horvath talk about the OTO, right? This is it. But it's also a plural, so to speak, form of OT, which is signs. So this is signs or confirmations is another, another word that uh, could be used for it. But, uh, you know, even still, there, there's, there's others connected to it, like ethics. I thought that was interesting that this very same word is, has a use in, as ethics. Um, it's, it's interesting what it's crossing. Behold, the days are coming. Yeah. <laughs> the signs. I thought that was interesting, too. Yeah. Uh, Computer is here. Here's the same word, OTO, and it's also here, OTO. It's there three times. And then there's OT. OT, this is the very same uh, root. Um, as you can see, in, the, in this is Ramsell method with, in the same skip, tools sitting right on top of it. That's incredible. Yeah. Now, computer has a very loose connection to Yako Framsel. It is here, but it's it's kind of off in the top right quadrant. It is not any proximity to it, but it is connected to codes, right? And he is connected to to codes. So there's there's a reason why it's there, even though he didn't use the computer. Yakov also appeared proximity here. This is the original. I'm, I'm uh, gonna say you can use the word uh, code. Kofwal Dalit with a resh in the, in, in the front. And that, that actually means skipping. But wow. it has the, has the root word for code in it. Yeah, and he used that phrase frequently. He, he would call it skipping. Uh, the words of the prophets, um, highly encoded. They, the, the, the rabbis are taking, oh, no, it's only in the Torah. It, no, it's not. <laughs> the, this is how we know that the prophets were sent by you is because their words are encoded and only the most high could do that this is how we know he spoke through them right so uh otherwise the man just says he's a prophet he's got these words and people actually say that today oh he was just a prophet didn't mean he was a real prophet he just was a prophet so that's as far as i've gotten with um the ramsel method now, and i know there's a lot more there but here's what it looks like now Anybody else working on codes? They're very good table, brother. Thanks for showing us that. That's awesome. Not good find. Yeah. Uh, it's probably got our names there. I haven't looked yet, but um, yeah. You working on anything? Uh, I haven't really been working on much, but I do have the Matthew 25 stuff that I we we all found this week. Um, just after our, our Monday um, uh, class, uh, we we started looking at Matthew 25, and I can't even remember how the conversation got uh, started. Oh, it was, yeah, no, now I do. It was over uh, uh, the bridegroom. It stops in the English and in the, in the, uh, in the Hebrew, 
And in the Greek, it, it all stops at bridegroom. But if you read the Aramaic, it keeps going. Uh, Wav, Kaf, Lamed, Tal, Aleph. Here's your bridegroom, right? Or, or your bride right here. So it also means to, to meet the bridegroom and the bride. That's what it should read. Yeah. And uh, I had approached Dr. Pigeon about that. But then I showed him uh, Revelation 21, where it actually says that New Jerusalem is the bride. Yeah, John, I was about to say that. John saw New Jerusalem dressed as, dressed as the bride coming down. Now, who's, who's the bride coming with? He's, she's coming with the bridegroom, right? Right. This kingdom, this is Yeshua bringing. The bride is actually New Jerusalem, and that is where we're going, the chambers. Right. Now, it, it, was, it was Brother Doug who was you know, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, and uh, was, was being shown that the virgins are not the bride here. The virgins are actually not the bride. The, the virgins, like you were saying the other day, that the, the, they're more like bridesmaids. Um, but anyways, in the language here, in the Aramaic, it's, it's all being missed in the other two languages. Okay, so there is a bride here, and it's, and it's right here. Uh, down to Matthew 23 here. This is what I posted in the room here in the, in the water cooler. We picked apart. Uh, the first part here the, is the word sign. Aleph Tau Tau, that's sign. I am Yod Resh, that's two words actually uh, watching, watching him. But, uh, uh, personalizing with the Wav, watching him, or he is watching. Um, but then the Ayan Yod Resh can also mean city. So watching for the city, uh, this means measure, or it's actually, it has several meanings, but I do believe the right uh, word here is measure because um, there's an angel actually measuring New Jerusalem in uh, Revelation 21. Um, so there's a little bit of a hinting at, at New Jerusalem here. Um, this word is not, this has actually two meanings. Knowing is, is what uh, the Strong's Concordance gives us. But this word here is hand and this word word here is I. It's actually two words put together. Um, this word here is, is actually the new, the noon is uh, switched around with the Tau. If you, if you switch them back around, you would have Aleph Tau Nun. And the Aleph Tau we know is, is representing Yahusha and Nun. Well, that really would be son of Nun. <laughs> And that's who Yahushua was, the son of Nun. Well, now we have the Yahushua, uh, Yahushua with the extra Wav. Um, the Yahushua is, seems to be not, not a disconnect or something, but more like incomplete because in, in the scripture in Joshua, we were reading about a man who's prophetically looking like our savior. Okay, there's, there's an, a, a figurative implication here. So as he is representing them, there's a disconnection with the Wa, but our heavenly savior, Yahushua, Yehush, with, the, with the extra Wa, the way that uh, Yitzhak Kaduri spelled it, that's his complete name, I do believe. Um, it has a prophetic, it's a, uh, Implication and there's only two spellings in, a, in the uh, Old Testament or in the Tanakh, or no, yeah, in the Tanakh. So if you switch the letters around, it actually you can see where Yahusha is is fits in there. Okay, and then this word here, it comes up in code at an ELS. 
one, two, three, four, five, every fifth letter, it spells uh, days. This word days that you just had in your table is actually indicating a space of time defined by an associated term. And in this case, uh, the word before it is talking about you, Yahusha, and also at the beginning of the, the verse, it's talking about signs. Okay, so a time frame in there, and then you have whoa, and then not. Now this last word is a little tricky because if you, if you flip the whole word around and drop the lamed, it actually spells something. This represents Yahusha again, and then this word, Tao Ayan Shin, represents uh, the one doing, uh, but if you take if you take the Lamed Shen Ayan here, it means to break through, which is what it's saying at the, at the end of this uh, verse, the Son of Man is coming. Well, it's an indication that Yahushua is the one coming, but more like breaking through. Okay, and then if you get down here to the uh, verse 14, you'll see Yobel actually quoted there. Um, I didn't get to translate this verse because I was focusing more on, on what's going on here. But uh, the Son of Man, uh, people were wondering where this was coming from, and uh, Greg was doing some research on that in Esword, I do believe. And... Uh, I think some believe that it's actually indicated the beginning in 14 because it's, it does run, run into each other. But however, if you take a good look at this word in reverse, you're going to see that there actually is an indication at the end of the verse already pointing at Yahusha, okay, which is really interesting. So this is where we got. I sent this to Dr. Pigeon and he was just blown away. Because this, this last verse, 13, actually supports uh, verse 1, where it does say where the bride is. Here, let me, um, did I save it? Hold on a second. I don't know if I saved it in here. Oh. I'd have to look for it again, but uh, anyways, this is what we've been working on the class uh, between Brother Greg, uh, Scott did some work with this on as well, and <laughs> I think others were contributing. Yeah, I heard you guys were in there for six or seven hours or something like that. It's a long time. Well, we we didn't really actually we didn't get into it until after we were we were just hanging out talking about stuff uh, on Monday night. I think it was after that we got into it. But uh, this is um, this is amazing. This here, uh, let me just pull up just so we can have a common rate frame of reference here. Uh, this is Revelation chapter. 21 verse 1 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth where the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I yawn saw the holy city new Jerusalem come down from Yahuwah out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband there it is right there yeah and uh, I think brother Greg has done some coding on this so I didn't. I don't want to speak for anybody. I'm just telling you where where we are, kind of where in this. So we we, I've been looking at codes in uh, Revelation 21. And I haven't. I think there's just one here that. Oh, two. Find New Jerusalem as an access term. The whole New Jerusalem. Oh, probably. Um. This is verse 9, and there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. 
And here you have the word ride. This is the same word that you see in Matthew 1 here. Or at, at the end of um, verse 1 and 25, yeah. Yeah, verse That's verse why. One. It Matthew makes sense, one. guys. So if the bridegroom yeah. and the bride are coming together. It, it's been a complete omission. Yeah. yeah the, the ten yeah. virgins are not to be married. That's why they're called Amma, right? They are maidens, the chambermaids. Right. Bridesmaids? Yeah. So you have the word bride, the root word here, actually, Kalif, Kaf, Lamed, Tau, Aleph, here. And then here's the word virgin, Bet, Tau, Lamed, Tau. This is the actual Hebrew spelling of, of virgin. Mm -hmm. And then you have the word people right here. This is on, on my on me. My people are with with me, sitting right on top of the word uh, bride. So the virgin, the virgins and the bride are together, and it's made up of the pe people, the the bride. Yeah, and see, this is what makes it so screwed up for the church and those trying to interpret that. It makes it seem like. Yeshua is a polygamist, right? Right. Because he's got, he's got at least five brides because the other five are foolish. No, we've been looking at this completely wrong. They mm -hmm. are the chambermaids. They're the virgins that tend to, like Esther, when Esther was being prepared for the, for the king, this was over a year-long process where she was being tended to by maids. She was bathed constantly. She was per oiled down with fine perfumes and, and dressed in decadence. A whole year before she was allowed to, to meet the king. So um, th that makes sense. We see in the Aramaic the bride and the groom coming. And in John, what does John say? He see, uh, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Here it is. It's the new Jerusalem coming down, decked as a bride, right? Mm -hmm. uh, That's incredible. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, there's one more. Uh, when I put in Yeshua, I can't remember the ELS on this, but uh, 5, 10, 15. He's 20, 22 cross Yeshua's wow. name here. And you have the 12 tribes of Israel written right across it. Uh, this is the word tribe. Tribes, actually, that's actually the word scepter, <laughs> too. Um, and then you have the word uh, Israel here, spelt in Aramaic, and then 12. Uh, in the, uh, the name, which verse was that, nine? All these Christians that think that, they, that the church is the bride, they're guests. We're all guests, right? <laughs> It, oh, uh, yeah, here, and the the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And them were the names of the names of the twelve tribes. They the That's twelve the foundations. Yeah, uh, and then here's the angel. Measures the city. I'll have to pull that table up. Any, anyways, I don't want to see her looking for that. It's, it's interesting. You see the word here for measure. This mm -hmm. is the word that's being used for measure. And, uh, um, you know, here's the other thing that I just realized about poly polygamous and like if, if it would have been, listen, they did have multiple wives, but they didn't marry them all at one time. All right. That's the thought. So this is, this is not 10 brides. When we're talking about, when he gave us the parable of the ten virgins, he was not talking about ten brides, right? This is a wrong way of looking at it. It's very obvious now. The, Arama the Aramaic exposed it. He was like, what? What is this? Well, John said, I saw the city. Come, look, Let me show you the bride, the lamb's wife. I saw a city coming down, New Jerusalem, decked as the bride. He was like, uh, you, you're just twisting that scripture to make it me. We're the bride. It's us. 
I mean, they get furious when you flip the script on them and show them something like that. And I'm talking from experience, trying to break the news to somebody. Hey, guys, you're looking at this all wrong. Let me show you something. This is what's so great about collaboration. We've got this many, this many people working on something. And I commend you guys for, for you know, having those marathon sessions like that. Um, um, my thanks to brother, brother Doug and brother Scott for, for really stepping up and, and uh, looking and identifying some of this stuff too, because uh, their eyes and ears were, were invaluable. And uh, uh, others too were, were uh, inputting too, as we were commenting in the, in the chat room. So yeah, the whole, the whole, class, I would say the whole class was participating in, in and in if, best observing and, and taking it in which was awesome so in that case Crazy. good job everyone that's everyone that participated is awesome uh did you record it by the way because i wasn't there no no we were and it's well, no, we, we, we weren't talking about this particular here in the class we were just talking about stuff other than that water cooler. yeah but then afterwards in in the in the chat room in the water cooler uh that's where brother Doug brought that up. And it just turned into a, just a full blown revelation. Yeah, it snowballed. Yeah. Can I, can I just say something? Yes. When I, I had always thought that like I was the bride. Yes, yes, yes. All of that. And the, the, I don't know what, what I thought about the bridesmaid, but I, they were somebody else. I don't know how yeah. I thought, that. but yeah. anyway, when I first heard it was Jerusalem, I couldn't quite get my head around it. It took a while. I thought, because it already yeah. had been instilled that the church yeah. is the bride. Yeah. And I thought, well, that too is wrong. Like, you know, it's just one more thing I had to, um, you know, reconcile. Reconcile. So, yep. but it took me a while. What I did is I put it on a shelf for a bit and then it kept coming up in other texts. Yeah. Ezra, uh, you know, and I thought, well, yeah, it is. And that, that is true. And, but I need to chew on things for a while and then I can see it or Abba cements it in my head so I can get my head around confirmations. it. Confirmations. That's what I do. I, I ask for confirmations. Yeah. I don't just run out of the gate with it. I mold that thing over and get some kind of confirmations until I'm convinced that this is, this is it. And I'm way past that point now um, with a lot of this, especially, oh, especially yeah. when you look at these five foolish virgins who didn't have oil. What does the oil represent when they come knocking on the door? Right. What does oil have to do with me knowing you? Uh, I don't know who you are. You can't come in. But I got oil. It's not about the oil. It's about knowing the person or, or Yeshua on that level, right? Because it's about his name at this point. But, but you know, part of being in this class and everything has taught me to not react right away, but sit and wait for a bit because the confirmation will come. If I don't understand it right off the gate, I go, okay, there's something I need to do here. I need to study a little bit more. I need to be patient with myself and others, and it will come. And yes, sure enough, now I'm quite comfortable with this. I understand it much, much better. And we are jewels in the walls of diadem. the city. That's right. Yeah, and in his diadem, like we are all over the city and him. Yeah. As far as I understand from what I've been reading. You know, so yeah. to me, that is now that is now beautiful. I no longer go like that can't be like, oh, but you know, to begin with, I thought that I never voiced it because I thought, okay, I'm not going to run off the mouth until I understand this better. And that's usually how I approach it. I'll be quiet for a bit and chew on it. No. But now I fully grasp it. And I, there's so many things that I have learned the last two or three years where I had to chew on it for a bit. I appreciate and that, I got you, it. Inga. That's what a good Berean does is, is you don't get, you, you got to not get offended first. You know, some people get offended when that's a reaction when, when something contradicts what you have been taught or what you know, that is your truth. Right. But if but you can step hard. out of it. Yeah, it's it very hard. Very hard. And you know, it, it cost me a little bit of sadness there for a bit because I had this beautiful vision in my head. That is another phase of that coming to the truth is once you first Letting get, go of it. Yeah. Yeah. Letting go of it, it takes a little bit of work and it takes a little bit of just like, and you have to give yourself the time to get over that. 
Yeah. Yeah, and, that's and the that's mulling over. How I deal with it. Yeah. And that was enough for me. <laughs> I but know I exactly what you're that, talking about. You know, we all go through these stages of acceptance when we learn the truth. You don't always get it right away. And there's different ways to react to it. My reaction is I get quiet and I start thinking. And I start studying a little bit more yeah. on that subject alone. And usually it'll come up in somebody else's YouTube or I read it somewhere. And then, okay, yeah, now, now I know that, that that's true. It's okay. I can go with that one. That's kind of a confirmation to hear you say that because he's, the Holy Spirit's dealt with me the same way. Uh, one of my earliest, remember, I can remember getting angry and actually mad, mad at, at those that were that are, were above me, my teachers and things like that, and, and Sunday school teachers um, that supposedly um, knew, right? They had been teaching me all this stuff. But this was about the preacher of rapture. Uh, that was instilled in me in a very early age. And I believe that fervently. And so when I discovered that I was taught wrong, uh, it was it was infuriating. Um, for, you know, first at, at those that were my pastors and teachers, but then at myself for not being a thorough researcher and doing the work myself, right? Because I just you, you hear what what they say and you just parrot that, repeat it to other people. I see that all over you Facebook and YouTube, people just parroting what their pastor says instead of actually breaking open their Bible. Getting, a, getting some reference books and actually digging down and seeing what, what's, what's it really been, you know, what's going on here. Uh, is it really what these pastors are teaching? And in many will discover that a lot of times it's not what, what they're teaching. It is actually 180 degrees the other direction. And so that's why I had to make, a, I had to make a, an abrupt turn. And uh, my channel suffered for that. Many people, they were like, what? Oh, he's anathema now. He's, he's not going to be, or he's just lost his crown because he don't believe in the pre-trib rapture. Wait a minute. There's not a, there's not a crown because you believe in the pre-trib. There's a crown for loving his coming. That, I still want to see him in the second coming. I didn't lose any crown. You know, so they started throwing these stones at me. Um, but I, I had to, you know, I was taught wrong. I'm sorry that I was teaching that and I had to repent, but I got to go in this direction now because now I got a better bearing, right? And this is where the Holy Spirit comes into play in the last days where it's, the scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit will teach us and reveal things to us. So it's really comforting to see that happening with you guys as well. Um, well, you know, Jonathan, I would not have known this if I had not been in this group. I know I've <laughs> not been doing the studying and stuff, but I pay attention and I, every meaning I can, can get to, I go. And I study a little bit all the time, but it is important to be here. It is important to be in discord, to help each other, to cope with the, the trials and tribulations of the daily grind, but here for edification and for us to learn who our Messiah really is and who our Father really is and how we connect with Him. I think, mm -hmm. I, I don't know where I would be at if I had not come into this group. I would not have known, Amen. I would not have known the name, I would not have, there was so, that I can't begin to list all the things I wouldn't have known. And when I get discouraged and think I haven't grown much, I look back at where I was just two years ago and I see, yes, I have learned a lot and I have changed a lot. Hallelujah. And I, I am so thankful for that. And that's why yesterday in the, in the YouTube thing, I was saying to people, you know, come to, everybody's welcome, but you have to have a willingness to learn and an openness of mind. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You've got to be open. Well, your heart is, is a big deal. He searches the heart of man. He knows your heart. If you want to search codes or be in this group because you want to know him on an intimate level, you don't you want to you don't want to dance around the, the false teaching and the doc and the doctrines that are out there. You want to know him on that level. You know, this is a great place to do that. Um, the fellowship, you guys, I, I see what's going on back and forth in, in Discord. You know, it's 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 a twenty four seven fellowship going on. And it's amazing to have that kind of support. Prayers are needed. There's a place to go where you've got at will, you know. As soon as you notify, there's at least a dozen people that know your prayer need, right? 
or have a notice of that. So yeah, it's a it's a great resource. Just the site, the Discord site. Yeah, Being I'm glad you guys are are course. growing. Say again, Paula. I actually um, talked about you last night, Paula. I'm sorry. Oh, you I didn't did? Tell yeah, you. I, I couldn't make it on there. I was too tired. <laughs> oh. um, well, I talked about you and I brag about you a little bit. So. Oh, you're so kind to do that. Um, I was, uh, now I don't even know what I was going to say. Oh, being, talking about the prayer in our Discord group, um, it, it's something to be so in one accord um, where... If someone has a need, we go right to it and we know what to do. We know how to ask the Father and Yahushua and and we're confident when we ask. And if if everyone would just learn the simple things of the word, I mean it's one thing to for us to delve into all this and, and get into the meat, but if someone's listening to this and they don't know how simple it can be to come to him as a little child and just ask i mean how simple is it ask and you shall receive how you know how simple amen yeah amen and that's what i was talking about last night incidentally with uh you was that you know the father yeshua said i hit you know i thank you father that you hid these things from the learned uh, and, you know, the educated, but you've revealed them to babes. And that's exactly what you just referenced. Um, that if, unless you come to him as a little child, right? Um, that is where he reveals amazing things in, in that kind of coming to him. Um, not that you want to, if you've got any agenda in your heart that you want to know something about your life or, you know, something in the future. And that's what you're, you know, searching for in the codes. <clears throat> that's that's not necessarily going to get you an open uh, door into the codes. Right. But diligently searching for him, like, like looking for your dad or your father in the mall. Cause you lost him. Right. You were trying to find him. Right. That's uh, that's the kind of looking he is looking for in a person is that you want to, you want to find him. Right. We don't want to hear about him and, and have, false teachings, erroneous teachings, and some are not intentional, I'm sure. It's just been passed down. But right. when it comes down to it, we want to know the truth. Um, and, and I think that that's what these codes are, are revealing, is that you can get down to the what what's being said in the Word. And in doing that, you get to know Him more intimately. Yeah. And you get to see what He has for us on a deep level, you know, um, it, just that it made me think when you said that it, it about your dad, like think of how many questions we, well, I'm a little older, but think of how many questions we never asked our older relatives that we would like to know now that they're not here anymore. And we could ask the father anything, but like I feel, I haven't even asked him half of probably what I want to know and why haven't I <laughs> right. Just because cause I haven't. <laughs> He's told us ask. Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody got anybody else got codes? Uh, I've got, uh, I've got something to share that I think is really critical. Sure. Let's see it brother. Join, join the 483 club, brother. <laughs> the what? The 483 club. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, good one. Okay. Uh, this is um, eSword. And I, I found the uh, Rashida in, uh, uh, for eSword. And uh, I purchased it. It's a minimal amount. It's like fifteen dollars, but um, it ha it comes with several modules. One of the really nice things is, um, uh, you know, you get uh, if you um, let me just go th go through them all. Here is the uh, here's a standard um, um, Rashida, 
And let's go to the um, Matthew 25 where it says, meet the groom and the bride. If we go into this uh, interlinear, we get all of the uh, uh, instances of um, when these uh, words uh, are uh, and their breakdown and, and so on. And I found this was, uh, this was very, very helpful in, in tables. It, uh, it tells what the root word is in Aramaic and, uh, and also gives, you know, several different instances of, uh, of it with, uh, you know, the, the virgin as opposed to just virgins and so on. Uh, the, uh, um, the other really kind of neat feature is uh, this is uh, with a vocalize where it shows you uh, uh, how to pronounce it, the, the word. And I found that kind of interesting uh, as, as well. Uh, there's also um, um, uh, this is the, uh, uh, for the whole Bible in, in Aramaic. And uh, let me show you where, where this comes in, uh, in real interesting. Let's go down here to, come on, where are we going? All right, let's go into Daniel and uh, go into Daniel 12. This is Daniel in, in Aramaic. So if we, uh, it doesn't have any uh, lookup uh, labels, but it uh, does give you the, uh, the actual Aramaic spelling. So if one of the things that you can't find in, uh, in the Aramaic um, um, New Testament is Jubilee. It, it doesn't exist there. Um, but uh, of course it, it does in the Old Testament. I, the, the next thing I was planning on looking up was seeing how, how uh, Jubilee would be spelled in Aramaic, because I'm, I'm building a, uh, um, uh, a whole table that all of the words are in Aramaic, and they all have their, their number where you can look, look the number up and, and see the word and see its derivation and so on. And uh, uh, let me, uh, let me, there, there's also uh, the first century Bible, but uh, of course, it doesn't have the Old Testament in it. But, um, and uh, uh, there are notes as well. Shot 21. Five are dead right now. They shot where, where was this? Odessa, Texas. Oh. It was a stabbing in Paris today, too. Uh -huh. There was a stabbing in Paris today, too. Well, this is 21 shot already, and they're still looking for us. Okay. It also has notes on, on here. A lot of, lot, of, lot of really nice features, and of course, uh, if, you, uh, if you want to search for a, a, a dictionary, it does have a dictionary where you can you can uh, you can search um, for any any particular word uh, you you might want. Okay, we'll search for bride, and here it gives uh, gives the word bride and uh, its derivation and all that. So there's a lot of really neat features in there. And uh, I wanted to sh quick show a, a code I'm 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 doing. It's going in all Aramaic, and um, this is um, um, basically uh, uh, the wearing the ephod. And uh, I, I noticed something really uh, really interesting, e even in the very first uh, line there there everything just all follows 
in the in the same in the same line. I found that just absolutely interesting. Um, there isn't isn't much to it at, at the moment, but in the wilderness and uh, and several other other words in there are are already there. So um, I'm I'm really looking looking into this and and uh, um, I, I'm putting in. Uh, all of the uh, uh, all of the uh, uh, um, the numbers of uh, of the uh, uh, that could be found in the uh, and the uh, that uh, gives the definition of the Aramaic term. You talking about the Strong's? No, it's not Strong's. It's uh, it's what what I just showed in the uh, in the uh, um, um, oh what do you call it uh, the E sword. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess the the S at the beginning would indicate Syriac. Right, and uh, and each each one of them is there. Uh, I haven't gone through all of them yet, but uh, there's there's you know, I'm I'm converting all of them over. So each one of the words is is the proper Aramaic spelling of the of the word. And uh, if the word like for instance uh, uh, Jubilee doesn't show up in uh, in the New Testament at all, so it's not in the Aramaic New Testament, but it is in the Old Testament, and there is a version of that is an esword of the Old Testament in Aramaic. So it's a it's a great resource. Very good. Yeah, there's several out there that are great. Anybody else got codes? Uh, I've got a couple things, brother. All right. Um, uh, happy Yom Tara, everyone. Shalom. I hope everyone's doing well. Hag Sameach. Yeah. Yeah, Hag um, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to cite the, the slivers uh, this evening, though, or at least try to, because we're uh, pretty overcast here where I'm at. But um, I don't, you know, I, this should be, I mean, what, what Brother Chris had shared uh, there in, in Matthew, this should be a, a big deal to people because it, you're seeing evidence of, of, you're seeing an omission of text, um, and not only in the Bible, but in a, in a synoptic gospel of all places. And it just goes to show that the Greek translators didn't fully understand what was going on, either that or they were, like I said in my other video, they were being pragmatic and they just didn't want to look at it, they were just ignoring it. Right. And, and, you know, many people are aware of the fact that the Bible is uh, mistranslated, but to them, it's just hearsay. They, it's almost cliche to, to it just... It is cliche. Matter of fact, they say it's infallible. They say King James is infallible. And right. we'll, we'll know the Tanakh is, you know, Yahuwah's word, but not a translation is infallible because there are actually several mistakes in the... In yes, King there's James. a lot. There's a lot. And, and people know that. But they just know it because they hear it. They they don't really know it because they've seen it. And and what Brother Chris is doing and all of us here, um, it, we can now actually show. They can actually visually see um, the the errors and, and really digest it instead of just hearing it as hearsay. Because when you hear something, it's just you know until you see something like this, it's and then all of a sudden it's it's a very big deal and. You know, to see all of this evolve is it's just amazing. Um, you know. So I, I praise you for this and um to see how 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 it's going and it's like a big onion, you know, that just it just it just keeps on peeling, you know, like it's just so much to it. It's amazing. Anyways, um so uh I I have a demonstration for the for the Ramsel method. Um, this is a very, very good demonstration of that. This is really incredible. Um, the first thing I'd like to, to show you guys, anyways. And the subject is, you know, I kind of roll my eyes when I hear about it anymore. But when, when you talk about the Illuminati and stuff, I mean, this is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's, you know, all the stuff that's that goes around. Um, pop culture and, and what have you. 
Um, you, you know, it's a lot of crazy stuff and it's a lot of smoke and mirrors and, and what, and all that. But, uh, at the end of the day, this is a very, re um, real thing that's in our face. Um, we have a enemy to contend with here. And, uh, one of the, one of the ideas is that this goes way back their, their bloodlines. There's like a, a, a top group of families, I believe it's either 13. Uh, 12 or 13, something like that. And you have like a, um, an immediate uh, like council of 300, right? I, I studied all this stuff um, years ago when I woke up and I kind of lost track of it because it just doesn't really, you know, it's just kind of first grade awakening stuff, you know? Um, but it's important to, to, to know. Um, but anyways, uh, there's this idea that they, that the, they go back, they're connected to the serpent, you know, the seed of the serpent doctrine. Now, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say that I am a firm believer in that, but I believe it's a very real possibility. And um, I've heard that they're, um, they're connected to Cain, you know, the whole thing with Cain being a progeny of, of the serpent. And hey, you know, who knows? It could be. But. This this here, this term here is hey noon aleph vav resh yod mem. That's ha hanorim. That is the enlightened ones. Now, when you translate the word illuminati, which is a Latin, uh, it means the enlightened ones. That's what it means. Illuminati is a it's a it's a translation. It's a um, yeah, it's translative. Um, I did find some other things. Um, you could spell it phonetically, but when you use what it means in its translation, that's what that is right there. And look where it shows. Look where it shows up. Chapter three of Genesis. Enmity between the seed and the and the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Wow. I find that really fascinating. Well, I mean, it's evidence. I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, this could really validate this idea that they're, you know, they're they're Kenites, um, they're progeny uh, uh, of Cain, and and Cain possibly being a progeny of the serpent. You know, I I dove into this topic pretty heavily. I know um, Zen is really a, a main proponent of this. And, you know, I, I got into it really heavily and then I just kind of backed off because I just kind of wanted to be pragmatic about it. Yeah. You, you know, it's good to be pragmatic about certain things. And when I saw this, it was like, wow. So I put it up on, on the table here. Um, you're going to see it. Um, it goes out of the screen, but that's in a linear fashion. Um, it starts way back here. It's at a skip of 26. So I set my screen wide enough to where it would fit. Uh, let me just kind of shorten this a little bit. These are just some minor details. And then what I did is I didn't really, I, I looked it up on a table and it will come up in a very short box, you know, very small field at a skip of 26. Anytime you pull something up that small, it's going to be in a really kind of tiny box. So I just opened up a field of text in Genesis at a skip of, um, this is at a skip of like 183. Um, so if I take Genesis and I start writing it out on paper, I would start, stop at 183 letters and then I'd start all over again on the next row and, and so forth and continue. And that's what you see here. And um, what's fascinating too is, like I said, you'll see that, that, that term here going across in these red letters. But when I had found that um, an, a Kushner anomaly in Daniel, I also found his name in a very interesting place um, in Genesis 4, Cain. Um, the mark of Cain, right? And you who has set a sign for Cain, lest anyone finding him should smite him. Okay, and 
Uh, you'll you Kushner's name is is encoded there. You'll see it there with this this kuf kuf vav shin noon resh, and I kind of shelf that because um, the immediate focus was on the one in Daniel. But now that I find this, and it's in such close proximity to that anomaly, I, I thought, well, that's an interesting connection. And so I started looking for some other details and anybody who's um, gone down this rabbit trail knows the origins of um, the, the Bavarian Illuminati with um, Adam, Adam Weishaupt. I started this uh, in 1776. And that year is encoded in the same um, verse here where, where you'll see Kushner. Uh, it's uh, Hey Tau Kuf Lamed Vav, 1776. And you'll also see that here again at the same skip going like this diagonally in the green. And you'll see it there in the purple at the same skip, it's such close proximity. And you'll see it going here vertically. Hey, Tau, Kuf, Lam, and Vav. That's 1776. Yeah. Um, and you'll also see it going horizontally where Kushner's encoded. And yeah. the, the Kuf in Kushner right here is in Cain. This is the mark of Cain. Now tell me that isn't uncanny, you know? Um, is, you know, now we know he's, a, he's part of this um, Chabad. Lubavitch organization, uh, which is something that we've spoken about already. But you know, as we know, um, when you when you talk about Illuminati, you're talking about a, a a large, tightly knit organization that um, is all inclusive with all kinds of organizations and groups and societies and cults and. Freemasons and Skull and Bones and all that stuff. It's just, it's all of that. Um, so it's no surprise to me to see his name there. Uh, I just, you know, I'm just kind of blown away. Um, uh, I, I know there's a connection to some of the other places that I saw this encoded um, is, um, there's a connection to uh, Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, Cush, because Cush was a, a Benjamite, I believe. The Cushites, aren't they a, a, a group kind of unto, unto themselves? I'd have to look and see where Cushite, let me see. Where I believe, because I, 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 I know Kushner. Cush I, I, is, um, I think, like somewhere like around India and. Um, I'm, I, okay. I'm pretty sure. Hold on. I, I want to say you're right on that. Kush is in Africa. Kush and is put. It? Okay. Kush yeah. and put. Yes. Yes. There you go. Um, I know his name has origins to that. But, but what they did is they changed the calf to a to a kuf. Yeah. Um, and ner right, means. So Here's what it says, Cush or Cush in Hebrew was, according to the Bible, the eldest son of Ham and of, of Noah. And he was the brother of Canaan uh, and Mitzrayim and Put, uh, the land of Li Libya. The mm. father, he's the father of the biblical Nimrod. That's mm. Yeah. That's very interesting. It makes sense. Yeah, and right. yeah. And, and, and then the connection to the, ch the children of. Uh, Cain, the Kenites. That is very interesting that he is the father of. If you go and look at Nimrod, <laughs> Nimrod became a Go, uh, Giborim, mm -hmm. which is, which is um, a, like mighty a hybrid. One. Yeah. He became like a giant, a, a mighty one. So when you talk about, you know, reptilian shapeshifters and stuff and the royal families and all this stuff, I mean, is it is it really far fetched? Is it? You know, to me, it isn't really all that far-fetched at all. Um, well, we know I'm, this. The mixing of the two, um, human and fallen angel, whatever, DNA, produces something unnatural, right? 
Yes. They are, they're capable of doing that. They're doing that now with cloning. And um, I mean, if you think about it, they, if, if the Smithsonian's disappeared, these uh, skeletons of giants, obvious that they're gone, right? They don't, they don't know where they are supposedly. Well, what if they went into the science community where they were going through extractions to get the mitochondria so that they could clone, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very plausible. Yeah, uh, I'm really fascinated. I'm going to look more into this, and it, and it's it's it'll kind of um, uh, put emphasis on an important topic because, like I said, I just kind of, for me, I I dove heavy into this stuff for a while, and I just I lost interest because I just felt it was time to move on to more pertinent spiritual matters, which should, should always be on the forefront, you know, the gospel and, and the Torah and, and everything that's important. Um, but, you know, stuff like this shouldn't be, um, it, it needs to still be, I guess, addressed from time to time, at least for, for me, for somebody who's kind of moved past it because other people kind of still need to wake up and, and, and are, and be made aware of, you know, that, things are the way they are in the world, you know. That, that is a very, very prominent part of our near future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's gonna, we're, we're going to be uh, subjected to yes. the past. And, and so this is very relevant. Thanks for sharing that. Well, um, thank you, brother. Great and, stuff, and man. You, it's really interesting how the, the, that year yeah. forms that. I mean, the same skip going in, in yes. opposite directions at the same – I mean, if you look at it, one's in one's a negative number, one's a positive number, right? And they're same exact angle, right? You see that? That's incredible. And then you got yeah. a vertical one going through it. It's almost like it's pointing yeah. you at something, right? Yeah, there it is at negative three six, negative three uh, three six seven and three six seven. Yeah, and just up from that, it'll those letters appear in reverse or or in uh, uh, the positive motion. Yes. Uh, I thought that was really cool, and you can um, you can uh, use the word Illuminati and its phonetics. Yeah, and, and, I've it before. And, yeah, and we're just going to do just a little demonstration, if you guys don't mind. Um, you can. There's several different ways you can spell this um, phonetically, and um, you'll find some really it'll show up in some really interesting places. It's um, to, to find it here at a skip of three, three, three. That's very interesting. I know that the skull and bones um, incorporate the three, two, two in their logo because that's their way of um, embracing the, uh, the apotheosis and, and the man becoming God thing, you know, uh, Genesis three, two, two. Uh, um, but the three, 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 I, I, it strikes me as, as strange. Um, have you ever heard about the term about the ritual of immortality? Huh? The ritual of immortality. Yes. Um, ancient Rome believed at one point, um, there, uh, the Greek, um, the false deities such as Zeus and all that, um, they believed at one point that uh, they had to devour um, a thing called ambrosia. Yes, yes. I've, uh, yeah, they, I've heard, some yeah. say it's a fruit that they have to, that a human ingests to become what they call immortal or almighty. Mm -hmm. um, but actually it's known as a, almost a, a fleshy type of fruit. What if it's actually DNA, a fleshy um, a part of a, of a giant or a, a something conjured up that actually has a lot of hybrid um, meat source in it. Yes. See, and then there's your connection to the garden account yeah. with eating the fruit, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And here's, here's one of the phonetic spellings of Illuminati. Um, you can truncate it and it, either way you do it, just, you can look it up on a, on a translator and it'll give it you the, uh, it's a really long word, but you can, you can play with the, the translation and you'll get some really like here, this is an Ezekiel in the midst of a rebellious house. If the eyes see and see not, have ears to hear and hear not. They are a rebellious house. 
Um, that those families they they are in rebellion to you. They're they're children of the devil. Um, you know, and they they have a lot of Hebrew um, imagery and Hebrew letters and Kabbalah and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And, and I believe it's because listen, even, s some of the Hebrews went with Korah. You understand? Mm -hmm. So yes. They um, rebelled against Moses. Yeah. This is why we got Jews like the Rothschilds and, and not right. just Jews. There's there there other Goyim, other nations of Israel that are involved um, that were haters of Israel. Uh, a good example is Soros is a Jewish hater of right. his own people. I mean, this is of the devil. That's the devil there. Yes. You'll see here because even because they have led my people astray, saying peace, and there is no peace. And when it buildeth up a sly wall, behold, they dub it with white plaster. And that's what they do as kings of the earth and these powerful leaders. They, they promise all of this, and they create an illusion, and they've led the people astray. But anyways, that's, that's just, I just wanted to kind of give that as a demonstration of applying Ramsell method. You know, putting in a term and seeing the results and seeing the um the relationship with with the term and the text it's it's uh was blown away and just real quick um, yeah that's why i always tell you guys to look at the plain text whenever you're looking at it so because there's always a relation somewhere um yeah in many cases look, look at that. that that shows form that's not random no it's not random at all um here's a large table um, with the with the really big tables, um, I don't really. Um, if, if there's no text coming together that is relevant for for the term, I, I really won't pay much attention to it on the larger tables. This is an ideal of uh, sixty seven thousand nine hundred forty. It's it's large, but uh, this is. Uh, I told you guys I was working on some tables with the Revelation twelve sign, kind of looking in hindsight. And uh, that's what this is. This is just Yom Terah. Uh, I wanted to show this to you guys. Um, the axis term here. This is the first table, too, that I've done that where you actually have to scroll up and down to see kind of all of it because there's more down here. And um, it's the first of its kind that I've done like that. Usually I, I like just to look in a small confined area or just whatever the page can show. Mm hmm but this time so it's what you're showing is that snooping is a valid because yeah. on any given table, yes. guys, there's, there's stuff encoded all the way around that cylinder. You can yeah. follow it around and find other things in it. it's called snooping. And it's a derogatory term that the rabbis say it is unacceptable. And I don't understand why it's unacceptable because it's either theirs or not there. The, the, the width of the cylinder is already established, right? Uh, so there's no yeah. subjectivity yeah. to what you find. It's either there. Or it's not there, you know? Yeah. Anyway, the relevance to one word or the other is the other thing that compounds the amazement. Right. And, and how thing, how all the terms, how all the text c comes together. Like the, the axis here is um, sign in the heavens. Uh, ot, uh, Aleph, Vav, Tau, Ot, um, Shemaya. Now this is the word heaven and it's the Aramaic. You'll find this in the book of Daniel, like my brother Doug was just showing. How, and you guys are aware that uh, Daniel and Ezra, they incorporated the Aramaic in those books. And uh, that's the word I used. And up here, you'll see uh, Leviticus 23, 24. Um, Yom Torah, the piece, um, piece of trumpets. First day of seventh month, first day. Uh, a memorial of, of trumpets. That's awesome, brother. Um, which is and, <laughs> yeah, which is today. Now, down here, down here on the bottom, this is where how this is how a a large table, how an axis term with a, a large skip will bring um, relevant text into the matrix. Uh, down here, you have the woman in travail. Pangs have taken hold of thee as a woman in travail. The daughter of Zion. 
the daughter of Zion and the woman in travail there. And then you have, this is really cool. Um, okay, here you have the year going perfectly vertically here, 5777. And you have um, Tishri, the first day of Tishri, Aleph, Tau, Shin, it's in this line of text here, Resh, Yod. Um, here, okay, here, this here is the Jubilee has come, Bet Aleph, Yod, Bet Lamed, Bach Yobel. Jubilee has come at a perfect skip. Here, I thought this was really cool. This is starting at the bottom. This is uh, Yod Lamed uh, Dalit, which is Yaled, it's child. Yod Bet Vav Aleph Ibuwa, which means uh, uh, has come, right? Is coming. A child has come. A child is coming. And that right there is to the throne of glory. To the throne of glory. Now, the child being caught up to the throne, Revelation 12. Right? I forget exactly which verse that is, but it talks about how she gives birth to the, ch to the man child who, who will rule with the rod of iron, iron, and he gets caught up to the throne. Revelation 12.5. 12, 12.5. 5. 12, 5. And to see the child is, is coming to the throne of glory, that's, that's how I was blown away. I'm like, this is Revelation 12 all the way. Um, this here I thought was really cool. This is the virgin, um, that, that translation that Brother Doug was showing, Bet, Tau, Bob, Lamed, Tau, and um, the virgins, and now we're talking about the virgins in the oil. This right here in the plain text is the horn of oil. This is when David gets anointed by, by um, Samuel. That would be like a picture of when Yeshua is anointed. Yeah, and that right here is um, the horn of oil. And look at that, where it says the oil, you have Yahuwah. It's going in a negative skip, but it's going through Yahuwah's name right there. The yes, horn yes. of oil. I was, yeah, I was overjoyed to see that. Um, let's see, you've got some really cool verses here. The remnant that has escaped out of the house of Judah shall again take its root downward and bear fruit upwards. So you have the remnant. Uh, this here, you're going to like Brother Chris. You're going to like to see this. Isaiah 49, 15 is here. Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, these may forget. Yet I will not forget thee. Um, there's some really cool uh, vertical anomalies here. It's... Uh, I was kind of blown away. Um, here, where it's talking about the remnant of Judah, and then here, for out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. Out of Mount Zion, they shall escape, and the zeal of Yahuwah of hosts shall perform this. And you'll see this vertical not only here, calf, lambed, hay, and hay, shin, hay. That's the bride of the Lamb. That word there is bride, and then the next word is lamb. So you have the bride of the lamb, and you're and there's Jerusalem right here, 